Professor Hong Yang Li from uh, uh, Northern University and uh, uh, Easy Forming uh, Materials Technology Company from China. Uh, Professor Li, the screen is yours. The, uh, the, the presentation is for uh, still research or global journey for Harry Padisha, Professor. So as I remember, when I first met Harry, he was uh, just uh, 53 years old. Uh, when I chose Harry as my professor at that moment, I think uh, Harry is a young professor. He is a very strong professor at that moment. But now it's a pity. He is already uh, preparing for the retirement already. So the nowadays I already uh, more than 40 years old now. So today my topic uh, could will, will be the reducing carbon emission in automotives developing by better steels. So my career started from the steels in Harris Group in Korean, uh, more than of course more than 20, 10 years ago. But now I developing some better steels. In this case, we can reduce carbon emission in auto, automotive industry. So at the beginning, we, we could say net widening of uh, automobile is a very hot topic to reduce the carbon emission in the, in the past decades. So here you can see every from the year by year, the carbon emission uh, decrease year by year because of uh, the technology development, especially the net widening contribute so much for the carbon, carbon, carbon emission reduction. However, today, uh, the tendency for the new energy vehicles become the very, very, very important. For example, in the, Chin, in the Chin, Chinese market, we can see the sales of uh, new, new energy vehicles uh, grows gradually, especially in this year. That means uh, more than, more, or more, or almost more than 20 million units of the new energy vehicles already get sales this year in China. So uh, when the energy for driving the vehicles change from the petrol to electric electricity or the other kind of, uh, for example, hybrid or even hydrogen. So in this case, uh, what will be changed in the carbon design uh, for example, in the previous the, the, the vehicles driven by the petrol energy, we can say this is a carbon emission by the materials per materials manufacturing. This is a, for the manufacturing for the carbon. This one, this is a carbon emission during the running running process of uh, for 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 100 100,000 kilometers running. So that means uh, the, the manufacturer for the materials or the manufacturer or the car body can just uh, get the uh, carbon, carbon emission less than 20% of the, in the total life of the, the, the car of the vehicles. But however, if we change the energy from the pet petrol to the electricity, in this case, uh, we can compare this is the uh, the, the the carbon emission during the running of the the new the yeah, electronic cars, but however the carbon emission uh, will in, increase gradually uh, during the materials uh, preparation and the manufacturing. So in this case, we need to consider the other the, the new policy that between the carbon emission and the net weighting. That means if we get the net weight materials, net weight carbon. Uh, if we get the more during uh, during the manufacturing of the car body during get the materials, so even if we reduce the car body as uh, weight, in this case we can the totally the, the for the for the total life of the car we can get increase the carbon even if we choose the the wrong materials with light weight but the, the the high carbon reduction during the manufacturing of the materials. So in this, this case, we need to consider, for example, in the in the in in the metals, we everybody know the, the density of the steel, aluminum, and manganese, because aluminum and manganese are light light metals. 
because uh, because of the very low density. The aluminum is uh, only have uh, one third of the density of uh, steels, uh, but uh, the steel have a uh, uh, have uh, larger strength compared with aluminum. So the totally, if we apply the aluminum to replace steel in the car body, that means normally we can reduce around 20% of the weight. But uh, if we consider about the, the, the materials, that means, uh, I mean, to obtain the metals from the later, the, 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 the metals from the later is uh, always is oxidized. So in this case, we need to get the metals from the oxidize in during this during the, the this processing so the carbon emission the for the steels is a green materials comparing with uh, the other two two materials that means only 10 percent of the carbon emission comparing with the aluminum so in this case, uh, we, we need to compare. We need to compare the balance between the lightweight of the car body to consider the, 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 the running processing. But we also need to con consider the carbon emission during manufacturing the car body. So the steels is the green materials, but we need to consider the balance between the the green materials and also the car body of the, the, the light weighting of the car body. So for the steel, it's some green materials comparing with the aluminum, but the light weight is always very important for the car body, for the, for the automotive industry. So how to net with the steels? Actually, if we increase the strength of the steel, we can actually re reduce the thickness of the steel. In this case, we also can reduce the application of the materials. In this case, we can get the lightweight car body. So how can we get to the high strength steels applied on the car body? So we need to, we need to solve several problems. At the beginning, at the first of all, we need to solve the problem for the formability. That means from a steel sheet, or from the steel planks, how to make the this kind of a complex shape for the car body for the component on the car body. Uh, normally, if we increase my increase the steels, increase the strength of the steels, it's very difficult to form it to the complex uh, uh, complex shapes like this one. So we actually have the, the other choice, the other routine for the form, forming the, the high, very high strength steels. How about let's uh, form the materials, stamping the materials at a very soft state. That means in the outside condition at very high temperature, for example, 800 degrees C. After that, we get a quenching in the dye. That's, this is uh, the, the, during the hot stamping process. That means we, we forming the materials as a soft condition. But after that, after the, the soft materials become the shape what we want, we get, get the component directly quench, quenching and uh, directly get the very high strength uh, uh, to form the martensite microstructure. In this case, we can get the very high strength of steels. That means uh, the current available materials is uh, now uh, of 1500 megapascal. This is the highest strength applied on, on the automotive uh, for the metals like this. If we're comparing with the soft, with the other kind of uh, conventional high strength steels like DP or even new generation QP, the hard something uh, processing can make the press hardening steels uh, to up to uh, 15, 100 megapascal. That, that means uh, the highest strength can be obtained from the press hardening processing. Because the press hardening processing can achieve very high strength of steel, in this case, uh, it's a most cost effective solution for lightweight of car body. Because, stiff, uh, because of the steels are very cheap comparing with uh, the other alloys 
for example, aluminum. And uh, as well as uh, for the processing of uh, press hardening, that means that during the hard stamping processing, we can also get the, uh, very easy to control the shape of the, the components. In this case, globally nowadays, we can we already use the, the press hardening steels more than 4 million tons per year because, uh, because of the lightweight of the steel and also because of the cost effective of the press hardening processing and, the, and as well as uh, the materials. The, but there is one problem. The problem is during hard stamping, that means we need to heat the materials to for austenization uh, up to around 930 degree, degrees C. In this case, we get this, the terrible surface oxidization. You can see here, uh, the, this is the microstructure for the, for the hard stamping steels after hard stamping. Uh, oxidization layer could be several micrometers. In this case, because of the several micrometers of the oxidization layer, the material, the, the component after press hardening cannot directly apply it for the car body. So we need to do some short pinning to get rid of the surface oxidization layer. So this will uh, decrease the, 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 the process of the, the, the shape of the materials after hard stamping. So, and uh, we also need to get rid of the surface layer for the of the oxidization layer because uh, with the oxidizing layer, uh, the materials cannot be get uh, e, e coating or after the uh, or for the painting on the on the car body. So we need to solve the problem uh, during the pro hard stamping processing, we need to get rid of the surface oxidization during the, the hard stamping processing. So we have a very great invention by, by Ancelo Metal to prevent the oxidization and the decarbonization during the hard stamping layers. That means this is a great invention by the aluminum silicon layer, aluminum silicon coating on the, on the raw materials. Uh, everybody know the aluminum have the melt point around 600 degrees C, but the materials need to heat it to um, around 900 degrees C for the austenization. So that means uh, the coating need to get, get melting and also have a very serious uh, uh, austenization will happen. How to solve this problem? How to get rid of? Uh, how to solve the, the, the problem? Because uh, the, 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 this invention are really smart because uh, they consider either the original of the materials. It could be a uh, aluminum. That means uh, always uh, the, the the pure aluminum on the surface of the coating. After that, during the heating. The aluminum get will get melting. After that, the aluminum will react with the iron. So in this case, in the surface, it, it, it's not uh, it's not the aluminum anymore. It will become the the alloy compound between iron and uh, aluminum. So the aluminum the compound compound of the uh, the aluminum and the uh, uh, Aluminum and uh, iron uh, in, in, in this compound can survive up to 1180 11, uh, degrees C. Uh, that means the, the, the melting point will increase much higher than the austenization temperature. In this case, we can survive. Uh, that means, uh, that, that means the, the surface, the coating layer can survive at the, during the the austenization head treatment. So in this case, before it's a pure aluminum, after that it will become the, 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 the metal compound between aluminum and uh, iron. So this aluminum coating, aluminum silicon coating, solves the problem for the, 
for the for the organization problem during hard stamping uh, process. But what's another every technology have the benefits. Also, we have the the this uh, the other side. What is the bad point for the for the uh, aluminum coating? Uh, for the car structure, for the car structure, like for, for example, in this kind of a component, for the during crash processing, mostly the fracture would happen like this one. This means uh, the fracture toughness during bending of the materials will dominate the fracture during car, during the 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 crash. That means if we need to increase the increase the Fracture toughness during bending for the for the materials to increase the improve the clutch performance of the, of the the car body. Uh, during we have the new standard to to evaluate the the bending fracture of the car body for 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 the materials is a, we call it a VDA is a VDA standard. We're using the, this kind of uh, uh, the, the bending processing. Uh, in this case, uh, the materials at this point are in the plain string condition. In this case, we can have the uh, the the notch the notchiest string on the on the surface at, at the, this point. That means uh, with the increase the bending angle, like the arf. When the angle increase, that means uh, the the larger string will happen will will, will be in the, on the surface. So because of the high bending angle means uh, better toughness, better bending toughness, better toughness means uh, better chromium performance, crush performance for the car, for the component. So in this case, uh, GM Motors require uh, proposed some new standard. New specification in the 2019. So increase the bending angle, request the, uh, the bending angle you need to improve to, to 60 degrees. That means uh, more than 20% of the improvement of, of the tablets. So this means uh, for the carpet application, the tablets are also very important, except uh, on, on the basis of the very high students. Uh, I just want to say the aluminum coating uh, have a very good, very, very have uh, the advantages to to solve the the oxidization problem. But the disadvantage of uh, aluminum coating is uh, that this coating actually decrease the bending angle. That means uh, decrease the decrease the the the, the, the fracture toughness of the surface. So if we compare uh, the, the raw materials, because of the, the bending, the, the largest not, not uh, not, string is on the surface of the materials. So everybody think uh, maybe it's because of the decarbonization, de decarbonization, decarbonization layer on the surface of the raw material, the bare materials. So the bare material has a better performance for the bending, uh, bending toughness, but but if we get rid of the 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 surface, get rid of the decarbonization layer, get rid of the the aluminum coating layer. After that, we also get a very good, a very good good uh, bending angle comparing with the aluminum coated materials. That means also twenty percent of uh, the improvement. You, 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 even if we get rid of any surface effect. So what's happening during the aluminum coating, uh, happening on the aluminum coating materials? That means uh, there is no any decarbon decarbonization on the surface, but something happening. That means uh, something happening on the surface that's uh, deteriorate, deteriorate the, the bending the bending angle on the because of the surface. Now let's say before the material before the process hardening processing before heating the materials the raw materials 
This is the substrate materials is uh, in the pernitic state, state and the surface is uh, just an aluminum based uh, coating. For example, this coating is around 20, 20 micrometers in thickness. After the, the heating processing, after the heating processing means uh, the aluminum and uh, the, the iron and the aluminum will, will, will diffuse each other to form the, to form the, the metal component compound on the surface. For example here, that means uh, originally we just think about the aluminum and, uh, and uh, iron and aluminum exchange and to form the surface layer. And, uh, but if we think about the, the surface layer here is alpha ferrite. Then this layer, this layer is uh, also very high aluminum content alpha ferrite. So, the story would become the, this story, the start of the story should go back to more than 20, 10 years ago. We consider about the Delta Ferrite. What's the Delta, Delta Ferrite? I studied actually with Harry Patricia during my PhD, go back to 2010. This layer is just a Delta, Delta Ferrite. This, this layer is just uh, iron and aluminum is a uh, anyway, it's a uh, aluminum. Alum, uh, it's a uh, alloy compound between iron and aluminum, or it's a uh, delta ferrite or alpha ferrite. That means that this will contain zero of carbon, almost zero of carbon. So in this case, we consider the carbon could be getting enriched in the surface. Next to after the extra simulation of the coating diffusion, we think the coating originally coating could be 25 micrometers as a standard. After the, after the, 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 the hard, hard stamping processing, the coating, will, the, the coating thickness will become or almost 45 or 50 micrometers. After the increase of the, 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 the interface, the carbon will get diffused into the matrix and in this case, we, we will get the very strong, very, very strong carbon enrichment on the interface. So the, this is the observation for the experimental. After this is the materials after, after hard stamping. This is the alpha ferrite. This is uh, the aluminum. Uh, this is the alloy compound between iron and aluminum. So if we, we, we get the mapping of carbon, or of carbon, we can see in, the, in this layer, the upper ferrite or, the, or in, in the alloy compound, there was uh, almost no carbon there. But uh, this is uh, total manganese B5. This is a uh, mountain site. So in this case, this is a high carbon region. But, but in, this, uh, in this layer, we can get the more carbon enrichment in during in, in this layer. This is because of the 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 iron of iron in the mountain side in, in the the matrix just go through the interface to aluminum to form the the metal compound. But we also need how about the carbon in the matrix, the carbon cannot go outside. That means uh, the carbon just uh, with the, 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 the movement of the interface, the carbon just uh, getting enriched on the surface. If there is a high carbon layer around uh, three or five micrometers, so I just talk, uh, I just said during the bending, bending of the materials, the, the press hardened steels, the crack should started initiated from the surface because uh, on the surface, uh, the, the, the string could be the nat natis string on the surface. So that means what happening in the aluminum coated materials, that means the carbon enrichment, that means a very high carbon mountain site in these layers, in the interface between the aluminum layer and the matrix. This will decrease the, the bending, uh, bending, fracture, bending fracture toughness for the materials. If, and uh, we, we do the bending, 
processing with a different angle. That means a different bending strain on the surface. In this case, we, we, we can observe the, the how, how I actually the crack initiate. This is a delta fiber. This is a fiber layer. This is a, the, the coating. That means the alloy compound. The, this layer could have uh, the the very high hardness and it's really really brittle. The hardness could be as high as uh, eight hundred or or one thousand HV. Uh, and uh, this layer is a uh, high aluminum ferrite, but uh, because of the high aluminum high aluminum containing in this layer, the crack. Uh, can directly go to the interface between the ferrets and the matrix metals. So in this, this case, all the all the all this kind of uh, crack just stop at at the interface between the ferrets and the matrix. We can see here, for example, here is thirty degree and the. 35 degree and 40 degree. This means uh, we get the deformation gradually on the surface, but we increase the, 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 the bending angle more and more until the fracture, we can say um, until the 50, this, this is a 55 degree, uh, just 80% uh, before the fracture strain. That means uh, the, the crack just started from the surface. This because of the, uh, on the surface, we already already know this surface is a high carbon mountain site. If this layer is a very high carbon mountain site, everybody can understand. If if there is a brittle layer on the surface, so how, what will happen? That means that this high carbon layer will become uh, we 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 are very easily initial the the crack on the surface. This will decrease decrease the total fracture toughness of the materials. So this is the fundamental for the poor bending, bending toughness for of the aluminum silicon coated press hardness steels. The problem is uh, how to improve the bendability. Even we already know the carbon, the carbon enrichment on the surface is uh, is the uh, the key reason to to reduce the fracture toughness of the aluminum coated materials. So the first idea is reducing the coating thickness, because when we re reduce the coating thickness, we can reduce the aluminum total aluminum content. That means we in this case we can reduce the the interface movement. When we in, in, increase, when, when we decrease the interface movement, we can decrease the carbon enrichment in the on the on, on the surf, on this layer on this uh, interface layer. So the other solution is uh, we can get some kind of a decarbonization layer before coating, because uh, uh, and the, but uh, the the original idea is uh, why we can. We just will reduce the, we, we, we restrict the coating layer just several micrometers because we need to control the decarbonization layer with only several micrometers. If we get the very large, large decarbonization layer on the original materials, if we increase the, the decarbonization layer, that means we will decrease the, the bending, bending top. Uh, Bending force quickly if we increase the if if we increase the this kind of uh, decarbonization layer more. So finally, we de we determine the micro decarbonization layer on the original materials due before press hardening processing is less than five micrometers. So this is a final industry product. We control the very thin layer of the or the 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 original aluminum coating coating layer and uh, we also re produce very little it's very easy to control during the the manufacturing in the in uh, during hot hot uh governation processing of the aluminum and coating 
So in this case, the result of the industry industry uh, materials we can uh, reduce the, the interface diffusion and uh, by decrease the coating thickness. And we also have a micro decarbonization layer uh, before the hard stamping processing. In this case, we did we uh, we we get rid of any uh, the uh, get get rid of all of this kind of carbon enrichment enrichment layer in this kind of, in this surface. In this case, we can improve the we can improve the bending angle. That means that we can improve the bending fracture toughness more than 20%. Just by get rid of the carbon enrichment layer, uh, this can just get rid of the several micrometers carbon enrichment layer. This is the standard of reference, reference technology of current of, uh, applied materials. This is the new technology. We will call it aluminum because uh, aluminum we get 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 less aluminum and aluminum oblique uh, thickness uh, on the surface of the before the hard stamping processing. In this case, we solve the the very tough problem to increase the twenty percent of the uh, twenty percent of the bending bending toughness just by very simple method. Increase reduce the total thickness of the aluminum, and we just get a, a very uh, easy to control. We get the very micrometer, several micrometers of uh, the decarbonization layer before the uh, during the the, the hard, hard rolling and a cold rolling process. So if we put these materials on the actually the, the real performance. To simulate the crescent of the car body, in this case, uh, during as formed condition, we also get the as baked condition because our, our, after the application on the car, all of all of the car have to uh, surpass the the baking process. That means uh, around a uh, pitting process. So we get the materials on the car is actually the as baked process. Uh, anyway. Comparing with the new technology and the, the reference materials, we can improve the the perm, the, the energy absorption energy absorption more than twenty percent because we improve the toughness for more than twenty percent. And uh, for the hydrogen embrittlement, everybody see hydrogen embrittlement as uh, a delay fracture. And the re, uh, is uh, re, related to the hydrogen embrittlement of the materials, but uh, the, for the hydrogen, it's very difficult to control the hydrogen in the materials. So, and uh, we just say, and the other reason for the delay fracture is because of the the reduced stress. This reduced stress and uh, and uh, and the hydrogen. Is um, uh, both of these two factors are not very easy to control um, for the industry processing. But uh, the other key factor for the, for the hydrogen improvement is just the, the toughness of the materials itself. So if we can, we can improve the toughness of the material, we also can improve the, we also can improve the hydrogen improvement of the materials. Uh, so when gets the when we or when we increase the toughness of the materials, so let's say the the result for the hydrogen embrittlement. After the hard stamping, we get the deformation the materials. So we just put it there. We we comparing with the regular aluminum coating and the thin coating materials. After 25, uh, after 50, uh, uh, 15 days later, when we observe the, 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 the extending of the crack, we can see or this is the original crack of the, the, the materials, but 25 days later, the crack, the, 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 the crack is just stopped there. But for the, for the original regular you know, aluminum silicon coated materials, 
the point, the, the end of the crack just uh, extending to this place. That means this is because of the, the delayed fracture with the hydrogen and also with the very, very large uh, stress concentration there. Uh, so this can prove if we improve, we increase the toughness of the materials, the materials themselves, we can actually solve the 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 solve the the, 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 the problem for the delayed fracture as well. And uh, if we're comparing the patent, the, for the new materials, we have the new technology because we are using the new thickness, absolutely different from the original materials because our originally original materials are, uh, I think the, the coating thickness could be more than 20 micrometers, but we think the, the better coating thickness could be around 10 micrometers. To the, and uh, after the, the heating processing, we think the best coating thickness could be between 10 to 20 micrometers. That means uh, this is a new technology other than original design. For the ma new materials, we solve the, the key problem for the materials from the physical metallurgy point of view. That means we improve the, the, the ductility, we, we improve the, the, the fracture toughness bending toughness. But if we want to put our materials really on the car, from paper to actually the car body, so we need to solve the other kind of problem. For example, here we need to also uh, solve the, 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 the problem to check the, the standard from the OEMs, the resist, resistance for the welding performance of the materials. We also evaluate the material, new, new materials because uh, we just reduce the thickness. We, we just reduce the, the electron uh, resistance on the surface of the coating. Actually, we get the uh, almost a little bit better performance compared with the regular coating materials. And uh, we can get close one key, one kilo amperes or uh, this kind of a current range. Uh, for the press win process window. So this is uh, uh, materials, uh, th this performance can satisfy the, 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 the standard for almost all the OEMs, for example, GM Motors. This is the material, this is the comp comparing the cross tensor strength, also the mechanical properties of the spot welds. We also can get Get, get uh, a little bit better performance comparing with the uh, the the conventional coating materials. This is the surface, uh, the, the knife of the uh, spots. We also need to uh, compare with the. We also get a very good result comparing with the regular materials. And uh, this this the second the. We also need to evaluate it for the coating uh, coating material coating uh, um, properties, also the corrosion resistance. All of the, this this one need to uh, satisfy this the standard for the the OEMs. If we compare the bare materials and the thin coating materials and the regular coating materials. For both of the two coated materials get much better performance compared with the raw materials, but almost get a very similar result for the corrosion resistance. resistance. Uh, according to the other kind of corrosion test, we also get a very similar uh, performance com comparing with the regular coating materials. So in this case, these materials, is already ready on the car body. So I actually uh, almost uh, have uh, maybe more than a thousand tons of the materials already ready on the, on the car body in, within next month in, in uh, local OGMs in China. And uh, when we use the new materials with the zinc coating, we have the other uh, advantages according to the carbon emission. Because as, as far as I know, 
or we we already talk I already the the, op, the materials I mean, I mean the aluminum. Uh, if we get the more aluminum, that means the more carbon emission we need to uh, pay. That means when we reduce the thickness of the coating from 25 micrometers to 10 micrometers, in this case, because of the reduce of the of the the apply of the aluminum, we can reduce totally around five percent of the carbon emission during. Uh, my manufacturing of the my, my, the steels, and uh, the other advantage for the new materials for the new coating, and before everybody think the because of the the aluminum coating, uh, coated materials need the need extending the the heating processing to get the fully also not just just because of the coating because of the. The, the heating resistance or uh, actually we found the fundamental re re reason we need to increase the inc increase the heating processing is because of the melting of the aluminum as well as well as, well as the, the the reaction between aluminum and uh, aluminum and the the iron. So if we're com comparing this heating car heating flow during this processing, that means a uh, coating melting and uh, as well as uh, the 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 reaction between aluminum and uh, iron, we uh, uh, need more almost the the same similar heating similar heating, uh, comparing with the transform phase transformation from alpha to to gamma. So when you when we reduce the thickness of the aluminum, we can reduce the heating processing, reading, reduce the heating, heat, heating time. We can during the very high heating efficiency of the new materials, we can reduce almost 30 percent of the, the total total soaking time in the furnace. So in this case, we also can reduce 20, 35 percent of the there's an energy during the heating processing because we re reduce the, the to totally reduce the 20, 25 percent of the heating mm -hmm. processing. Uh, the other advantage of the new solution, that means alucinin, we just reduce the thickness of the aluminum is for the tailored blank laser welding. For the TWB, TWB can reduce the, the parts and of the car and also re re reduce the spot wheels for the car body and reduce the complex complexity of for the car body. That means we can and we also can improve the the material materials uh NAS. Oh, that means we improve the, the materials. Of, we also can reduce the total thickness of the total of the, uh, the width of the, the the whole structure for about around maybe twenty percent. If when we use the tailored blank laser welding blanks for the car body, but the problem is uh, for the aluminum in the originally the original uh, materials for the aluminum coating that means uh, twenty five. Percent of uh, micrometers of the aluminum. After the spot, after the laser welding, all of the aluminum will go into the will go into the the the, the laser welding. So when the aluminum go into the this welding, because of the high aluminum, will get will result in the presence of the delta ferrets. The delta presence of delta ferrets in this kind of a scene will reduce the the strength of the 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 the, the, the words. In this case, uh, all of this uh, the fracture will always uh, happen. I in this kind of uh, words. So we need to solve this problem to make the. Uh, this material after spot after laser welding we need to the materials just broken in the in the raw materials but not in in, in the laser welding seams. 
the original solution had uh, two sol solutions. The first one is uh, get rid of the aluminum by uh, uh, by get by this kind of method to get rid of the aluminum by laser. And the other solution is uh, uh, with the uh, wire filling welding. That means add some the other elements in the in this kind of uh, welding to solve this problem. But for our new solution, new materials, new solution of aluminum coating materials, we just have very less uh, less aluminum coating there. So we can I, I actually we can permit this kind of aluminum into the materials. We do not do any extra processing, just that we call the direct laser welding is becomes possible because with the new solution for the aluminum silicon coated materials, this is the microstructure. It's almost uh, after hard stamping, we get almost a fully matte matte microstructure, just the, almost the same microstructure and it's almost the same strength comparable with the base metal. In this case, we get uh, always get, get get this kind of uh, fracture on the base metals. So the materials with the less aluminum coating also will get the new the new solution for the laser welding materials. So at the end of the presentation, we need to say the alucinine is our, our new technology for the for the the uh press hardened steels. We get the next carbon emission of the materials, we get next carbon emission on the materials processing. We also get the uh, net width a lightweight with microstructure and let with the car body because of the laser welding because of the improve of the toughness of uh, of the materials so the new technology and slim can bring a new balance between the the, the materials between the carbon emission and the net weightening even for the new electronic um electronic uh, car, car electronic cars Thank you very much. This is my presentation. Thank you very much for the excellent presentation and the floor is open for the discussion. I've seen some previous discussion in the chat uh, happening. So maybe uh, Steve or Harry could comment on uh, that further. Yes. <laughs> Uh, aluminum and carbon dioxide. So I, th I think uh, Hongliang uh, Steve is uh, asking yep. uh, whether there is a real cost of CO2 with aluminum production because, you know, a lot of aluminum production comes from, uh, for example, hydroelectric power and, and so forth. Okay, uh, even that, that can reduce just uh, half of the carbon emission, just reduce half of the carbon. That means uh, for the carbon emission to manufacture the aluminum is not only because of the, the power, the, the electricity, but as well as because the carbon is, uh, is the, the, the uh, yeah. Okay, we'll wait a moment because uh, it is consuming consuming the carbon during get the aluminum during the process. So to get the reduce the electricity power, just reduce just half of the half of the the, the, the carbon emission. In that case, in that means uh, if we even we use the green power for the aluminum uh, manufacture we also get uh, almost five five times of the carbon emission compared with the uh, iron steve do you want to comment uh, actually uh, yeah my my question is uh, because the the data uh hong liang show the in terms of the carbon dioxide emission from aluminum is actually higher than the steel. So my question is whether this data is actually come from just from China because uh, in, in China we have a lot of uh, 
electricity that actually generated by coal, for example. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, if uh, if the, the, the electricity from carbon that will double the carbon emission for the manufacturing of the aluminum. So, but uh, the, for the during the, the manufacturing of the aluminum, because uh, the undoubt un of the carbon or will get consuming during the processing. That means that, that also can produce uh, much of the carbon there. We, we actually have the data uh, from the, the other source. That means uh, if we get the, the green power, just can reduce the half of the, the carbon emission of uh, aluminum, just reduce half. That means uh, even we get the green power, that means we also will have uh, the carbon emission of the, the aluminum get all, almost uh, five times comparing with the uh, comparing with the uh, we, we get the iron. Okay. Uh, I actually I have the source, but uh, it's, it's from some some local report from some 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 car company, so I cannot share that materials to everybody. Okay. Thank Thank you. So it's the anode, Steve. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Originally, I also think it's just because of the energy consumption. Mm -hmm. So, but as, after we, we asked the, the export for the aluminum, they, said, they, they they told me it's not only because of the energy, the half half. Okay, we have another question from Sif. Yes, so, so microstructure is martensitic, right, of this steel. So it is responsible for baking response. Uh, normally, we, after the, in the fresh mountain sites, uh, we normally we uh, increase the top list for more than around 20%. Normally we, we can get, for example, if we just get the bending in the video, the evaluation of the materials in the as uh, received the press hardness steel, the bending angle, for example, just 50, 50 degree. After the baking, this, uh, the, the bending angle will in, increase to more than 55 degree, more than at least more than 10% of the in, improvement for the, for the bending half disk. If we're comparing of the tensile tens tens test, normally uh, yielding strength will increase from 1,000 megapascal to 1,200 uh, megapascal, at least one, 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 100 megapascal improvement. But, uh, we, but the, for the tensile, type, tensile strength will reduce around 500, uh, uh, no, 550 megapascal. For the elongation, the for the baking processing we are normally increase uh, zero point five percent of the total elongation, normally like that. Yeah, but is it kind of tempering that is taking place, or the usual bake hardening by dislocation locking and so forth? Uh, actually, for the mountain side, in this kind of painting, just to improve the. Uh, uh, it's a hardening, but it's if we. Considering of the the, the yielding strength because uh, of some um, epsilon carbide ca will get ju just uh, uh, precipitate, but uh, for the tensile stress, tensile strength normally it just get decreased. So the hardening process, hardening effect is for the yielding strength during at uh, the beginning of the 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 the. the, the, the Plastic deformation. If not, let me thank for uh, this excellent talk and uh, presenting this very innovative uh, uh, technology. Uh, let, let me invite you for uh, uh, the final session of our uh, seminar series on December 14th at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, UK time. And thank you very much for your kind attention today. <laughs>